Today, instead of our regular reflection service or reflective conversation from our previous Sunday sermon, today I want to use this opportunity to share with you a special worship service put on the by the Peace with Justice uh, Committee of the California Pacific Annual Conference. One of the things that I have a very unique blessing to celebrate as a United Methodist pastor is the reality that we fight for our open table. We share this reality that one and all are welcome at the table of Jesus Christ. And we we hold this really deep history within the words and the and the heart of John Wesley that shares that the world is his parish. Not just one parish, not just one building, not just one community of people, but the world is his parish. So today we celebrate that with uh, sharing this video from the Peace with Justice uh, Committee of the California Pacific Conference. Uh, May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen.
justice and peace. Divine Parent of all, Santo, 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 Dios de justicia y paz, Divino Padre de todos. Restoring us a spirit of hope, not fear, justice, not corruption, peace, not violence. Restaurar en nosotros un espíritu de esperanza, no temer a la justicia, no a la corrupción paz, no a la violencia. So that we may be agents of your love, bearing witness to your glorious salvation, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Join me in the call to worship. God asks us, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Here am I, send me. God asks us, who will visit those who are in prison and advocate for a justice system that is fair and restorative? Here am I, send me. Eme aquí, envíame me. God asks us, who will welcome the stranger and recognize as family all who call to Abba, Allah, or Yahweh, regardless of country of origin or immigration status. God asks us who will heal the wounds of slavery, break the bonds of prejudice and oppression, affirm in word and action that black lives matter. Here am I, send me. Eme aquí, envíame a mí. God asks us, who will care for the earth and model a lifestyle rooted in stewardship that shares and protects the goodness of creation? Here am I, send me. Lead Here us, I Spirit am. of God.
complicit in systems that harm our neighbors and circumvent God's vision of peace with justice. So with the confidence of God's children, may we confess our failings to the divine parent. Let us pray. Abba God, we remember the times that we could have spoken truth in love to the bully, the rude coworker, or the racist family member, but chose instead to stay comfortably silent. We confess that when injustice does not directly affect us, we find it too easy to look the other way. We become frozen when we face the enormity of peacemaking even though we know that the body of Christ suffers when any of our sisters and brothers suffer. Forgive us for our fear, complacency, and complicity. Encourage us to leverage our privilege and to use our resources to replace unjust systems with beloved community. Hear these words of assurance. We are loved so much that God sent Jesus to us, not to condemn us, but to be saved through him. The prophet Isaiah wrote, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. And the people of God respond by saying, thank you, God. Amen. I'll be reading from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are Led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom ye cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For a full hour, my daughter, hi, Efeso, Vahewa, Vesta, Fa, or Tuku, Giono, Wong, Fuma, Wahim, Iversi, I am Piano Faria. He got out made in Anga, Ia, Aia, Naninga, he I wa getaha, Ia, Nani Holoki, Aki Hono Kakano. I am a hair. I am a fate e tanni. Manefaka anga, I love a cow. I am a cotto to unipe. Oh, he can now hear I walk o ya. Go had tamata for o pe taha, ya dea. The farale ai. The ea et a sino taha can a toy farale lame or to a aketawa osipe. Go mea e colossi. He ene tāma te i a e whei te i tāni i he mea koia. Pea ne hau o talamerino ke te moutolo na e mama o. Mo talamerino ki a ki he kakai na e o fi. He wakai. Ko e mea i a e te ia o ko ta whakatou apa-apa ngo fua ke hoko ai tu ki he ta mai he ta lau māri e taha. Pekoia, o ikai te mō kei koe kau muri moe au nofo. Ka, o ku mō kolo taha moe whaenga tapu. Pe o ku mō i he whaamiri o e otua. He ko langa ki mō tōlu ki he makatu unga ko kau apostolo moe kau palo fita. Ko siisu kalaisia ko hono maka tau whatunga motu a, Aia o ku hae ai pe i he ene a fio ai hoko hoko le lei o e whare katoa. Pea o ku whaka a au hake ai pe ia 
ke hoko ko ha tempare tapu. Tu'u ihe eiki, a ene a fio, o ko fa hoko ai, a ke mou tolu hoki ki he whare, mo o a fio anga o o tua, ye lau maare. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 22. I'll be reading from the epistle of Romans chapter 8. Verses 12 through 17. It reads as thus. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great
every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. These are the words penned by James Weldon Johnson in hymn number 519 in the United Methodist Hymnal. They are also the words that have been adopted by most African Americans as the Negro National Anthem. I would imagine because it reeks of pain and still offers hope for a brighter tomorrow. Thus we lift every voice and sing. The psalmist wrote in the 34th division of the psalm, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I think sometimes we believe that we can only praise God when things are filled with sunshine and gentle ocean breezes, but praising God always is more than that. Our African forefathers taught us that it also includes times of sorrow and grief. In COVID-19 times and in systemic racism times of civil unrest caused by unjust government, oppression, and acts of violence against people of color. I will bless the Lord at all times, and I won't stop praising him for what he has done and for what he is about to do. If you were in this space, that would be a good time to say amen. Today, I'd like to take a few minutes just to share this limited time and space, a word from the Lord, and to give you a little insight into the realities of many of your brothers and sisters who may not look like you do. I want you to get a glimpse of what living on the other side of the track looks like. Because for many in my hearing today, you have lost perspective or never even thought about what it's like for others living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'd like for us to wake up to the reality of what it's all about without being defensive or judgmental. As my children often remind me, Daddy, we just need you to listen and hear us before you tell us what we ought to do. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and 27, the word of God reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female created them. I ask that you, sir, and you, ma'am, you pray for me as I speak from the title, Association Without Assimilation. To those who are not aware of who I am, I am Pastor Anthony Boger, and mine is a different journey than most in ministry and especially as it relates to my call in ministry in the United Methodist Church. Much of my 38 years of professional ministry has been in a truly multicultural and multiracial context, even when it did not start out that way. I have served as a pastor of black churches when significant numbers of whites have joined in fellowship, I have served as pastor to white churches where a significant number of blacks and other forms of minority groups have joined and found a spiritual home. Not multicultural or multiracial in a disrespectful or diluted way of, of ethnic pluralism when sharing a campus is called multicultural ministry 
or in an assimilated way where the dominant culture dominates or dictates the styles and the forms of worship, and then we call it multicultural or multiracial, when in fact it is not that at all, but in a meaningful context of integration, where everyone has a voice and adds value regardless of the language, ethnicity, or racial biases in which one brings to the table of fellowship. I am very much a black man who is a graduate from a historically black college, an HBCU. It was in this form of higher education that I learned the value of having association without assimilation with other people groups. In other words, how do we live the example of Christ ministering to everybody and anybody without having to look like or act like someone else in order to be accepted by that group? How can we be together without acting or looking like one another? Association without assimilation. What it means is being fully accepted with all my cultural differences, all my ethnic distinctions, without having to prove to anyone that I'm acceptable even in my black skin. Who are you? Who are we in Christ without having to pretend to be white or Asian or Latino or any other thing that we are other than the way we were created in the image of God who made us in his likeness. There's something else that I want you to know about me in a way of introduction. My mother was born a sharecropper in 1931 in Pace, Mississippi. My grandmother, who was born in 1901, was a sharecropper. And my great-grandmother, born right after the Emancipation Proclamation that was signed in 1863 by President Lincoln. Yet people say that we should forget about the enslavement of my foreparents, even though the wealth of the United States of America was built on the backs of free labor that was brought to this country against their will. This was not an immigration program. This was not DACA. This was not a welfare to work program. This was the first Holocaust and plantations were the first internment camps before German Jews and before the Japanese encampments. But plantationism lasted more than 400 years. The very White House that our POTUS lives in was built with free labor. The economy that produced generational wealth for so many was built on the backs of free labor in the cotton fields, tobacco fields, and the rice fields of the South. This story that I tell you is not merely a story that's found in a black history book, but it is the life that I have lived through oral tradition that my parents, who had to wash off the stench of it all for a hundred years, but the stench rises every time an unarmed black man or woman gets killed and justice goes unmitted. People who have not taken the time to learn the history of policing would be ignorant to the fact that police came into existence in the South when the number of freed slaves was outnumbering the number of whites. And in an effort to keep control of what would rightfully be angry men and women, so militias were formed to keep black people under control. There has been a lot of discussion about Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter and based upon the philosophical, philosophical premise of the Declaration of Independence, I would say that you are absolutely right in theory. But historically and in actuality, it has been shown that until black people in America are seen as human beings and not merely a produce or a product or a livestock, then all lives matter only when all includes black lives that have been ignored and made second class within our policy-making structures. In his book, The $40 Million Slave, 
William Roden makes the cogent argument that black athletes' evolution has merely been a journey from literal plantations to today's figurative ones. In the form of collegiate and professional sports programs, drawing from his, uh, from his decades as a sports writer, Roden contends that black athletes' exercise of true power is as limited today as when masters force their slaves to race and fight. As a Christian black man who believes that the Bible gives us everything we need for eternal life and godliness, I think Christians must begin our opposition to racism with a biblical and theological analysis of the problem and with a biblical and theological presentation for the solution to the problem. Christians must also be thorough exegetes of both the Bible and of our own social locations as we use common grace resources and common sense under the authority of Scripture to eradicate the evil of racism and the power of the Spirit. We must carefully and critically evaluate every idea in any organization in light of scripture and under the authority of scripture. We must reject teachings in any organization that are contrary to the scripture. However, the recent criticisms against Christians who affirm the spiritual truth of black dignity using the words Black Lives Matter seem odd to me as a black Christian man in America. After all, the Bible affirms black lives are created in the image of God, as we read in Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27. And our country has a history of dehumanizing black people. The word black lives matter affirm a scriptural truth about black people. Brothers and sisters, black people should not have to fight for policy change in order to be treated right and justly. If we must, we will, but we shouldn't have to do this at all. If you treated your neighbor as you treat yourself, then it wouldn't be necessary at all. The Bible speaks clearly about God's vision to restore everything that Adam and Eve lost in the Garden of Eden and his vision to redeem ethnically diverse individuals from different tongues, tribes, peoples, and nations. Through Christ's death and resurrection, God makes sinners right with himself. And then he reconciles sinners with one another. And thirdly, he restores and reconciles the entire universe. Paul calls this cosmic redemption the disarming of earthly and demonic powers and the unification of all things and all people in Christ. Racism is opposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ and against God's vision to redeem and unify the creation through Christ Jesus. God recreates through Christ a diversity of different tongues and tribes and people and nations into one new but diverse people. God commands us to live in pursuit of reconciled community with one another and with our neighbors in anticipation of the age to come. Therefore, all lives matter. It's only when black lives matter. You can no longer overlook the injustices that are crystal clear. You can no longer not hire black young men and women because they make you feel uncomfortable. You can no longer put the camera only on them when they walk into your store. You can no longer assume that all black men play basketball and football as a way out. You must see black people as creative and viable and valuable and intelligent and desiring something better. God's kingdom is an already and a not yet kingdom whose king is a brown-skinned Jewish Messiah. The kingdom is filled with diverse people and diverse stories of beautiful image bearers who've tasted the salvation of one God 
the one Lord, and the one Spirit by faith in Christ. As Christians, we must intentionally oppose racism because God through Christ empowers us and commands us to walk in love with the power of the Spirit. And one way which Christians walk in the Spirit is when we love our neighbors as ourselves. A matter of fact, as I prepare to close, Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 14, it reads, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do you... Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. As a black Christian pastor of Asian and black and brown and white people, I thank God that Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through, seven, to, through 27, clearly states God created all humans in his image and bestows upon us God-given dignity and that he prom promises to redeem us, to reconcile us, and to restore the entire creation through Christ. When black lives are dehumanized, and treated as though they don't matter simply because they're black, Christians everywhere should be able to stand up with Bible in their hand and we deserve to call out the world to give dignity and to give worth and to give value just as non-black lives certainly matter and have worth and dignity and value. God created black people in his image too. God redeems black lives in Christ. Black lives matter to God because the Bible teaches they matter. But in your positioning, you cannot have expectation that people look like you do, act like you do, talk like you, or be like you in order to be accepted by you. That's unreasonable. Why can't we have association without having to assimilate for your comfort level? Why does the young black man's braided hair intimidate you? Why does the darkness of my skin offend you? Why does a highly educated black family moving into your neighborhood disturb you so much? In closing, I admonish those within my hearing to wake up and get up and do something about this craziness. You don't have to get on a plane to go to a third world, country, third world country to live in mission. When you are needed in a mission field right here in the backyard of the California Pacific Annual Conference, people are hungry, in need of education, and opportunity. You can make a difference with your talent, with your time, and with your money, and with your influence. Let's associate without having to assimilate. God bless you. Today is the day God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends, and so shall we. Today is the day God cries with the masses of starving peoples, despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace, and so shall we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful and lifts up the lowly, and so shall we. Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exalts when the wolf grazes with a lamb, and so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, gives sight to the blind, and sets the oppressed free, and so shall we. 
Praise God, all peoples of the earth. Praise God for the great gift of birth. Praise God who rules the nation still. God, bend them to your perfect will. Praise God, creator of us all, peoples and nations, great and small. Praise God, who makes wars to cease. God, lead us in the paths of peace. As we go into the world, may the divine parent lead us to be agents of peace with justice. May the Holy Spirit fill us with a spirit not of fear, but of adoption, so that all who we meet will know the love and grace of Jesus Christ. So now, go in peace. Amen. Show me your face. I want to see you. I want to see your glory and I want